Okay, we want to find all this information and then get the graph. We want to find the zeros of this one, in other words, the x-intercepts. We want to find the multiplicities. We also want to find the behaviors with that. Okay, so the first thing is that you want to look at what makes each individual part equal to zero. So the first thing, if I set that part equal to zero, that means I'm going to get zero. So zero would be your first x-intercept. Next, if I take x minus 5 set equal to 0, that means that I would get 5. That's the next 0. Then I have a plus 3. Setting equal to 0, I would get minus 3. Okay, so negative 3 is the other x-intercept. Uh, the multiplicities that are on these. The multiplicities would be the powers that are on each of these factored pieces. And here, since there was no power originally given, each of these are going to be a 1. There's a 1 on top of this one, a 1 on that one, and a 1 on the other one. So actually each of these multiplicities are going to be 1. So here's how you find the degree. For the degree, you're going to add all the multiplicities together. Your degree is always equal to the sum of your multiplicities. So that means that if I add those together, I'm going to get 3. Because I have the degree is 3, automatically I'm going to know the maximum number of turning points. The maximum number of turning points is always 1 less than your degree, so that means that this is going to be 2. Now we're ready to find the y-intercept. Now the y-intercept is where x equals 0. Well, if x is 0, if I put 0 in here, that's going to make the whole thing 0, so that means my y-intercept is going to be 0. So now, the last thing I have to find here is going to be these behaviors. The behaviors are going to tell you what does the graph look like when it crosses here. So I know that I can go ahead and fill these points in 0, 5, and negative 3. I know for sure the graph is going to cross through those dots right there, so I know that for sure. But I need to know these behaviors. These behaviors will tell me, does it look like a square over there? Does it look like a line? This is going to tell me exactly what the graph will look like when it crosses at those points. So we need to find the actual behavior equation for that one. So when you do behavior equation, you're going to do, first of all, you'll do the behavior at each zero separately. We're first going to do the one at zero. So here's how you're going to do that. What you do is you plug zero into the expression for all the pieces that does not give you a zero for the whole thing. So in other words, the zero, I don't want to put zero in for x because if I do, the whole thing is going to cancel out. We already saw that already when we did the y-intercept. Instead, I'm going to leave the x alone, leave it as just x. I'm going to put zero in this one and also put zero into the second one. So here's what that looks like. At zero, I have x and then I have zero minus five and 0 plus 3. So I'm putting in a, a 0 only in the second two. I don't want to put 0 in the first one. If I do, the whole thing's going to cancel out. I'm not going to have any uh, formula at all or any expression. So I'm putting in 0 only in the second two. I'm going to simplify that. I get negative 15x as a result. That means that is going to be the behavior expression or equation that I have at 0. So what does that mean? It means that when the graph crosses through at zero, the graph is going to resemble the line y equals negative 15x. So now let's do it for the next zero. We have a zero, uh, it's going to be five. So at five, okay, so at five, we put a five, we don't want to put five into the middle one because that's going to cause the whole thing to be a zero. I want to put a five in the first one and put a five in the last one. Okay, so when I do that, I get 5 for the first one. I'm going to leave the x minus 5 alone, and then I'm going to put in a 5 for the second one. And in doing so, I get y equals, okay, I have, this is going to be 8, and then 5 gives me a 40 times x minus 5. You can either put your answer in as 40 times x minus 5, or if you want to multiply it out, you can. You get 40x minus 200, and that would be your behavior for that one. And then 
uh, that would be it. So this is another line again. That is a line with a positive slope. So that means that when it crosses at 5, the graph is going to resemble the line 40x minus 200. The last one is I want to find the 0 at negative 3. Negative 3, you'll put it in for the first two, but you don't want to put negative 3 in the last expression because otherwise, again, the whole thing turns into a 0. So I'm only going to put negative 3 into just the first two. What that looks like is I have negative 3, negative 3 minus 5, and then I have x plus 3. I'm not going to put anything in for that one. I'm going to simplify it. And I get, this is negative 8 times negative 3. That's positive 24. So I get 24 times x plus 3, or again, you can multiply it out, 24x plus 72. So now that we have these behaviors, we're ready to draw our graph because we can just draw these sketches in here, and by putting in the sketches, that'll tell us what the graph looks like. Negative 15x, what, what does that look like? Well, that's a line, and if it's negative, it's going to be slanting like this. It's slanting to the left. So I'm just going to draw in a little sketch here. That means the line's going to look like that. It's going to lean to the left. This one is a positive slope. That's going to lean to the right, as will also this one here, 24x plus 72. That leans to the right. So when I draw my, my uh, graph here, these little sketches that I came up with, I'm going to draw those in at each of the zeros. So at, at zero, it's slanting this way. Now you don't have to be accurate with this. Uh, we're just getting an overall sketch. So I'm gonna just draw it like that. It's leaning to the left. It's gonna be fairly steep. This next one, uh, at five, it's going to also be pretty steep. It's gonna look like this. And then this one is 24x plus 72. That's gonna lean to the right and look like this. So now we have an idea of what the graph is going to uh, look like. So I also talk about something in the notes called end behavior. End behavior is uh, uh, some models that I gave you in the notes, and that depends on what the highest, what the degree is, and also that A of N that we talked about before, that comes back into play as well. So if you look at your notes, there's four different graphs that are in there, depending on what your end behavior is. So on this, our end behavior we're gonna use to figure out which direction the graph is going to go. Now in this case, uh, your, and for this problem, my degree, you're looking for whether it's even or odd because the four little graphs I gave you in the notes, that tells you whether it's even or odd or not. In this case, it's going to be odd. Degree is odd. Now the A of N, okay, so how do we figure out A of N? Okay, for this, you're gonna look at um, for each of these, you just multiply each of the coefficients of x together. There's a 1 in front of the x here, there's a 1 in front of the x there, and there's a 1 in front of the other one. So if I were to multiply all that together, I'd have a 1x, a 1x, and a 1x. That would give me a 1x uh, cubed. So you're only concerned about whether the a of n is po greater than 0 or less than 0. In this case, your a of n is going to be greater than 0. The little model that I gave you in those notes says that the graph is going to go down and it's going to go up. Again, there's four different models that you want to look at in the notes. For this particular one, degree is odd because my degree here is 3. That's an odd number, so I got that. And A of N, again, the numbers in front of the X's, those are all positive, so when you multiply them, you're going to get a positive number as a result. So because of that, uh, we know that the graph is going to go down like this and up like this. So therefore, we can connect everything all together and draw on our graph. Now, exactly how high or how low it goes with sketches, you're not going to be able to determine that. You'd have to actually plug in points to find out exactly how high or how low it goes. So I'm only looking for a general sketch. So the general sketch is going to look uh, something like this. So this is just the, what the overall one's going to look like. Notice that we have two turning points. That's the most it could have. The max number of turning points for degree 3 is going to be 2. And we have all this information filled out. Again, behaviors are going to tell you a lot about what the graph looks like. We have behavior at age 0 would be these. This down here, this is called end behavior. And that's, again, where you look at those models that are listed in the notes.